And now we'll cover caustics, which is one of my favorite things in Vectorworks because I am easily distracted by shiny objects. Uh, here we'll show you a pre-rendered example in the OpenGL slide workspace here. Pull this up. And you can see here, that, that's the object we were just looking at. It's sort of a little ashtray proxy thing going on here. But all this is for is just a transparent object that has interesting play of how the light refracts off of it, bounces off, and, and displays against objects underneath. Uh, you can see spherical objects have much the same, that you'll get that effect. If you look at a glass of water on a table on a sunny day, you'll see what I mean. It basically has these sort of ringlets. Uh, if it has water, they'll have different distortions in the light. And it's something that you don't really notice isn't there until you aren't seeing it. So keep this in mind. And then now we'll go back to the examples on the table. And now we have two lights to get that effect. We have a red one and a blue one. Uh, I will turn off caustics to start with now. I'll set these both to none. They're both none at the moment. And we'll go ahead and use this rendering mode, which will zoom us into the caustics, uh, zoom us into the table, and then it'll uh, show the two lights. And I can, of course, go up here once the rendering is begun. And I'll be able to select my lights from this view as well, so I don't have to go back to the other view and change it. We'll let this render up. It's a relatively high render. I think I have the geometry turned down a little bit. OpenGL is turned down at the moment. That's why this looks so faceted. But uh, in the rendering mode, it'll be a little higher. There, and you can already see it. This is about as far as it's going to go. This is what a lot of the default renderings will look like when you don't enable caustics or you don't enable any fancy light functions. You can see I have a pool of red over here, a pool of blue over here, and then they merge to a sort of pinkish white in the middle. That's because they're just both two simple light objects. There's nothing fancy going on about them at all. Uh, what we will do, however, is we'll pause this rendering. And then we will select these two lights, but we'll edit them each one at a time. And we'll turn the caustic, caustic photons uh, high. We'll do high for now. Uh, we, and it'll attempt to re-render right away. We'll hit escape to cancel that. And then we'll set this other object to also have caustic photons. And this will do show caustics only. So show caustics only is important because we don't want to show these big pools of light in addition to the caustics. That's not how light really works in real space. That should be on by default, I suggest. But um, generally, I never turn it off. If you want to light your scene, you'll want to light it with regular lights, and then to get this caustic effect, you'll specifically turn this on. And now you can see what I mean. You get the blue and the red caustics going off in two different directions. So you can see how the light plays across each other. Now, if you enable caustics for every light in your document, and you can only do it for point lights and spotlights, I believe, it will not work for directional lights because the volume of photons being calculated is just out of control. There's no way for that to finish in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so we've permanently disabled those two. Don't, it doesn't need to be turned on for everything. Pretty much only lights that are going to be striking or passing through glass would need to have this turned on. You're not going to notice it in an environment that doesn't have a lot of glass or doesn't have a lot of uh, light play going off of it. Um, you, you might notice caustics coming through a straight flat piece of glass, but also, it, but, but generally it's only intended for curved surfaces or surfaces that have many facets. So glassware on a table, uh, a complex crystal would have this look to it. But you generally wouldn't need to turn caustic light and aim it at a window. You're not really going to see any sort of this display going on unless the glass is very old. So uh, generally, this is something if you're doing very high quality interior renders. Uh, in an exterior render, you're not going to notice caustics a lot other than the fact that it dramatically increases how long the rendering is actually going to take to finish. If I, however, do what I've recommended not to do earlier, and I edit these two lights and don't show caustics only. I'll hit that. I'll also edit this light and not show caustics only. And we'll give that just a moment. You'll see what I mean. You'll get the caustics, but since the same light is emitting the caustics as is casting that pool of light, it's very easy for the light to sort of wash out and you won't see the caustics coming through very well. Gen generally, where you'll see caustics is, like I've said, a very bright exterior environment shining at glass. Now, see, I have the caustics here, but I also have this big pool of light, which is sort of overly bright and unnecessary. That's what that is. You, you Almost all the time when you're using the caustic photons, you'll want to just turn it to... Um, to caustics only so that it doesn't do that. The high, medium, and low settings, generally high looks great. Uh, let's see if it'll let me edit more than one at a time when it comes to caustics. It may, it may not, yeah, it does. So it'll show caustics only for both these lights. Low is a little too low. It will just, and we'll see that in just a moment. 
It might work because these lights are very close to this object, but generally low caustics is just if you want a slight hint of it. But also see the splotchiness? That's because low is referring to the number of photons that are coming from the light object that are going to be calculated in this manner. So low doesn't look right. It's a sort of dreamy, I just got hit in the head with a lead pipe look to it. You don't generally want that in a rendering. It'll give you a quick look as to what it's going to look like, but it'll be very splotchy and hot spotted and not usually be what you want to look at. Medium is also somewhat fine. Uh, I generally leave it at high. Very high is insanely high. It can make your render take 8 to 12 times as long as it would have taken on medium or high. Um, generally, I would leave that alone. Uh, very high is pretty unnecessary. High is fine. Same as a lot of the other rendering settings. Just max sliding all the bars to maximum is generally a bad idea. It'll look great. But often it'll look no different than it would look on medium to high when you're set to very high. And it'll take 10 to 12 times as long. It's just paying for quality with efficiency. So generally don't slide that all the way up. High, more than enough for most renderings. This is also, uh, I forgot to mention, this is also very realistic. So if you were to take a lens, if you were to make like a, a bowed out lens, like in glasses or in a flashlight or a magnifying glass, and shine caustic light at it, it will behave like it does in reality. It will very, very closely imitate that. So if you had a, a, a set of glasses just laying on a table, you would get that sort of lensing effect uh, that you would get in real life if you had the light in the same location. It's almost physically impossible to do caustic calculations without being extremely accurate. So if you're trying to emulate an existing condition, this is something to think of. You don't need caustics, of course. It doesn't come into play unless you're going for photorealism. And it generally doesn't need to come in until the very end. Uh, generally, if you're rendering over and over and over, even fast render works, or even a, a fast uh, render work style to do testing, Call 6 doesn't need to be turned on.